led to spike sit a couple of times over the many years that I've owned it, but not quite like this. In fact, I had to look back at my gas log records to actually see when it was the last time that I filled this thing up and rode it. And that day was New Year's Day. But life gets in the way, projects get in the way, and before you know it, your mini moto has turned into a parcel shelf in the garage. But we're here to reverse that with a couple of items to get it freshened up and ready to ride again. The first step, which you've already seen, is to wash the bike with a half-assed video montage. Next, I wanna go over this top to bottom, front to back, all of the maintenance that is required for these bikes and that should be done at least on an annual basis. I think this would be very helpful for those of you that maybe, I guess like me at this point, have mini motos that aren't necessarily ridden on a daily basis. They kind of sit in the garage, they're used as pit bikes, stunt bikes, and only come out on occasion. So this is a good, full, comprehensive list of things that you should do every time you want to roll this bike out after it's been sitting for quite a while. Now that everything is nice and clean, let's start with the most obvious maintenance item, an oil change. Actually, the first thing we should do is see if this thing turns on. After all, it has been sitting for quite a while. Then again, it is a Honda, so... Like it was turned on yesterday. But we'll let this idle for a little bit, get the juices flowing, then we'll do the oil change. Now, of course, this is a very obvious maintenance item, which is why we're just knocking it out first thing, because oil changes are probably the most common thing that you're gonna do for this bike. I don't remember the interval in my head specifically. I'll put it on the screen right now. But in general, I do this personally at least two times a year. It's a good idea to do this at least on a periodic basis rather than a miles basis, because one of the issues here with Groms particularly Maybe not so much for me in my area because I live in a very dry climate, but if you live in a wet climate or park it outside where it's exposed to a lot of moisture, I've seen a lot of cases where moisture actually gets inside the engine case and it turns your oil very milky. And you don't want that sitting in there because water and oil, first of all, they don't mix, number one, but number two, water getting into areas like your piston, like your cylinder, that stuff doesn't compress. As you can see, mine is not milky, but not the cleanest. But while I let it do its business, let's do another maintenance item real quick, a valve check. Let's pretend I said this in the last clip. Okay, allow me to immediately amend what I just said in that last clip, because if you're doing the valve check, you wanna make sure this engine is cold, but rest assured, it is now cold. I've allowed it to cool down in the time that it took me to get the camera set up, to make sure that everything's at top dead center with the markings and that the cam gear is aligned, even dropping the cam gear cover in the oil to make sure it's nice and lubricated. But now I'm ready to check the valves. Now the values that I'm going for are not necessarily gonna be the values that you're gonna be going for because I don't have a stock cam. But if you do have a stock cam, these are the values that you're going to be looking for for the intake and the exhaust. However, in my case, as I said, I have a DHM cam, so my values are going to be these. And I will do that right now with my feeler gauge and with my valve adjustment tool. This is a specialty tool for valve adjustments. I highly, highly recommend getting one of these if you haven't already. You could just use it with a wrench and some pliers, but this makes it that much easier to get it very precise. In fact, I'll drop an affiliate link down below if you wanna get one of these. I highly recommend it, and maybe you can throw some sense my way. And valve check done, just like that. It was actually really easy because all I had to do was just check it. I didn't have to make any adjustments at all. That's the nature of Hondas. You just have to inspect them. But now we put oil in the engine to finish up the oil change now to go from the messiest project on this refresh to the second messiest which is a brake flush now we're really getting into the stuff that is vastly overlooked in fact i'm guilty of this too because looking at everything now i'm pretty sure the last time i changed this brake fluid was when i changed the brake lines which would have been in 2018 but no time like the present up top i have the brake reservoir open and leveled out all ready to accept new fluid and i'm going to be doing that with this manual vacuum pump that I got from Tusk, link down below. You don't necessarily need this, but it makes it just that much easier. You could just pump the brake and hold it while you crack it open. Actually, this fluid is not the worst, but definitely not the best either. So still glad I did this. And now onto the rear of the bike. This one is the exact same concept. It's just a little bit more involved because you have to take off the shrouds on the side here in order to gain access to the reservoir. Keen observers might note that I have a little bit different hardware behind here than you would normally see with an OG grind 
Rom. I actually did a write-up a couple of years ago about how I did this and set up everything. Basically what I did was I changed the charging system from an OG charging system to an SF charging system. So I'll link that down below too if you're curious. And just like that, all the brakes are done. Minus that one bolt, I had no issues whatsoever. Everything's nice and firm. I also checked all of the brake pads as well, just to make sure there's plenty of meat left on them. And thankfully they're all good. I think I replaced those about a year and a half ago. So there's not too much mileage on those. Now with the shroud off, we might as well go into the next bit, which is the air filter. This is an aftermarket one from KN, and it is a reusable filter, so I can clean this and put it back on. If you have a different system like the stock one or something else that's more disposable, then you'd want to toss those, put on new filters. But in this case, I do have an air filter cleaning kit, which I will spray that down just to make sure everything, all the contaminants are off of it, rinse it out thoroughly, let it sit overnight to make sure that's completely dry, and then tomorrow we'll apply some air filter oil to it and reinstall install and on to the next thing. And that next thing is the drivetrain. No better time too since it's on the center stand. It gives us a perfect placement to inspect everything, clean and lube the chain, and to check the chain slack and make any adjustments if necessary. Next we're going to move up to the cables and if you've seen my prior videos you know exactly what these cables can look like after many years of abuse and lack of lubrication really. It does have some friction within the cable so it's always best to lube them up and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. Next, we'll check the spark plug, mostly to make sure it's still there. And now the battery, again, just to make sure that it's still there. But I also wanna check the voltage with the bike off and on because I would just wanna make sure that the charging system is working because I've had issues with the past. And you wanna figure this out in the garage rather than 30 miles away at a gas station. Ask me how I know. Well, we're in the final stretch now. Second to last step, check your tire pressure. Yes, this is a rhinestone pink valve stem cover. And now onto the final step, the creme de la creme, the piece de resistance. This is a three-parter, gear up, gas up, and go. Thank you so much for taking a look. Feel free to berate me in the comments if there is anything that I missed, and I promise I will revoke my YouTube mechanic certification. Also, check out all of the affiliate links down below for all the specialty tools that I use throughout this video. Feel free to throw a few cents my way, and I'll see you next time. Bye.